Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to receive Sim Mapal. He will talk to us about the concept of the leadership. Can you introduce yourself and on, in few words and uh, present your uh, concept? Sure. Uh, thank you. First of all, thank you for having me, uh, Geoffrey. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Well, as Geoffrey said, my name is Sim Mapal. Uh, I am a, a business strategist by profession uh, and I, an experience in uh, fashion. Uh, I was born in Amritsar in India, but I moved to Canada in April 2018. Uh, currently, I'm a student at HEC uh, Montreal. Uh, I'm pursuing my MBA, and I'm also the director of uh, communications and the director of uh, finance club uh, for uh, the Students Association of uh, MBA. Uh, in my last role, I was serving as the growth and strategy director for a fashion tech platform. and. Uh, we had a lot of challenges for sure uh, and one of the learnings from those challenges is that the importance of leadership and hence that is why i want to talk about uh, the concept of leadership with you all today why do you feel leadership is important uh, well first of all i feel that uh, it, it initiates action uh, it is the job of a leader to set a course and to guide uh, their followers or the team or people that they work with, their colleagues, uh, towards that goal. But it's, it's up to the leader to start. It's up to the leader to tell them, okay, that this is the goal, this is how you start, and this is how you go about it. You need not micromanage, basically, I would say, but you, you have to have faith in your team that they would carry out that, the tasks. Uh, but it is up to you to uh, tell them that what the end goal is uh, to a great extent. Uh, apart from that, I think that another importance of leadership is motivation. And by motivation, it doesn't necessarily mean that I come to you and say, hey, Geoffrey, good job. Uh, uh, some people might be happy with that, but you have to understand that every, pe every person has a different aspiration, a different uh, need. So the motivation itself could be monetary or non-monetary. Somebody might be happy with uh, just uh, an award. Uh, somebody else <laughs> exactly might need uh, money as, as a motivation, whereas some third person might need a combination of uh, these two things. So you have to understand who you're working with, what motivates those people, and you give the reward or the motivation in, in the same way. But motivation nonetheless is perhaps one of the most important things uh, when it comes to uh, leadership. Uh, lastly, I would say guidance. Uh, I mentioned earlier that you have to set a course so that people can uh, work towards that, that goal. But you also have to guide them through, throughout the course sometimes, not micromanage, but maybe bring them back to the path if, if they lose focus. Uh, uh, it, it also helps uh, them to be more effective, more efficient, and it boosts the performance of not only the, the person himself or herself, but also of the team uh, overall. Mm, great. What are the weaknesses of leadership? Can they be fixed? Oh, weaknesses. Yes, I, I feel there, there are weaknesses, and uh, fortunately, they can be fixed as well. <laughs> uh, the biggest weakness that comes to my mind at the moment is perhaps lack of trust. OK, yeah. Uh, sometimes leaders, they're humans. They, they start micromanaging, and they feel that, okay, my, my colleague or my subordinate is not doing a, a good job, so they start micromanaging. Uh, it's fine. It, micromanaging is fine if you are a manager. But if you want to become a leader, no. It's a, it's a total no-no. I, I wouldn't go. First of all, once you start micromanaging, you put a lot of burden on yourself. Yeah. You would always be under stress, and you do not want that. Uh, you would, and, and, and your team will also underperform. They could underperform because a they feel that okay even if I do if I'm even if I'm going somewhere wrong my boss is there or my uh, my uh, colleague is there to help me and they they stop taking uh, experimenting uh, with the different things which is not something that you would want people to do they, you want them to experiment to innovate to come up with new ideas uh, also if if you if you start being omnipresent you're everywhere you'll start feeling like a uh, big brother uh, again yeah. you might be happy being big brother but the people that you work with uh, may not want uh, a big brother uh, i think the the way to get rid of this problem is that you should take a step back sometimes uh, from from the environment of the work and and look at the bigger picture and see okay 
this is the main problem and what have you been doing so far has it addressed the problem or not and if not then you might have to change your strategy or you have to change the way you are looking at the at the whole picture uh, and adjust uh, accordingly the last problem that i f see with leadership is perhaps stagnancy and 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 stagnancy comes from basically i feel i'll give you an example let's say that you're a leader and you you have you had a project and you <laughs> and you become successful <laughs> once you become successful you feel comfortable yeah. if you feel comfortable you become stagnant and stagnancy leads to lack of innovation it's true you might win today you might be at the top of the world today but if you don't change if you don't innovate you cannot remain at the top of the world forever so somebody else might take your position so what you have to do is you, you have to innovate and innovate in the way you do things innovate in the way you think of uh, different ideas uh, also innovate uh, the way that uh, the, the environment works uh, or, or your team works uh, with themselves or with other members or other departments or, or clients or maybe even suppliers or your colleagues if you're a student with the, with your colleagues you, you have to innovate the way you think uh, that that is extremely important but the, the, this does not mean that you lose focus on the mission you have to stay focused on your end goal um, but you have to change the strategy sometimes how do you change the strategy how do you innovate you, you take feedback you take feedback from your team you take feedback from clients from colleagues from uh, stakeholders investors suppliers it could be anyone your wife uh, I, I I wouldn't bet on that, but yeah, sure. <laughs> you can take feedback from your wife, uh, but but everybody knows who's the leader in that place. So, <laughs> um, well, uh, as I was saying, once you take feedback, it it uh, helps you to see where your strategy is lacking on in focus and where you might have to change. You might have to innovate, and you you come back to the to the place uh, where where the goal is or where the mission is. Oh, thanks, Greg. How does a new generation influence leadership? How does a new generation influence leadership? I, I, I hope you're talking about millennials. I mean, that's a buzzword, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, millennials. Let me try to uh, rephrase the question so that maybe the audience can understand it better. How, how has leadership evolved? Yeah. Or how has leadership changed over the years? We are sitting in 2019. What is the definition of leadership today or uh, what are the key factors that differentiate leadership today f uh, from uh, maybe 10 years ago or 50 years ago exactly. or 100 years ago? Exactly. The biggest evolution that I see is undoubtedly diversity. And I do not mean merely the diversity of race, of religion, of gender. That is obviously important. Nobody denies that fact. But what is perhaps even more important is the diversity of thoughts diversity of ideas, diversity of backgrounds, opinions, that is extremely important. Let's say, Geoffrey, you and me have the same ideas, have, we are the same people, we always hang out together, we are friends since, uh, uh, since childhood and we live in the same city. We would always have the same ideas. Okay. We will never think of anything out of the box. We will agree on the same things and we'll disagree on the same things. There is no uh, way that we can think of any, anything new there is no way we can bring about change and you have to bring about change and how change is brought about is by bringing in people from different various backgrounds uh, it helps you to see the problem that you're addressing from all angles and it helps also in a way with complementarity which means that if I am weak in something and Geoffrey over here in, is strong in that thing, he can help me reach that level or maybe balance out the equation and, and vice versa. Maybe I can help in something else. So, so the team itself, it grows, it becomes better. And as a leader, you would also grow because even you're human. So you would also learn from your, from your team and you would see, okay, this is something that they've been doing and they've been successful and this is something that you can learn from. And yes, you would learn from that. Um, another evolution today is maybe choosing the right partners uh, just as life partners uh, you you cannot go wrong over there you, you have to choose <laughs> otherwise you're <laughs> uh, in, a, in a big trouble so uh, similarly you have to choose the partners and by partner could be any anything between a business partner 
to a teammate, to a colleague, uh, to a supplier, and if you're lucky enough, maybe even clients. Um, you have to see what is the cost in terms of money, effort, and time in working with a person. If the cost is too high as compared to benefits, there is no point of working uh, with that person. Maybe you can take a step back and say, not this project, maybe we can work on something else. We, we don't agree, we don't see eye to eye on a lot of things over here. So choosing the right partner, uh, it, it helps you uh, with, 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 uh, with reaching the goal professionally, but also personally. Because if you can be friends with that person, if, if you can open up to that person, uh, talk about problems that, that you have on a day-to-day -day life in your work, um, on maybe sometimes if you're friendly, maybe in your personal life, I think it leads uh, to a lot of uh, positivity, happiness, uh, but also professional growth. So everything is important. To, to the people who are looking for maybe joining a new company, I would suggest always choose a company where you feel that you'll fit not just financially, but also psychologically, also mentally, also culture, uh, from a culture point of view. These are really important things. Uh, if you don't, yes, you, you will be happy with the, maybe a big pay package today, but uh, the pay packages would not matter three years down the line or five or 10 years down the line. Everybody's gonna be at the same level. Uh, happiness is what is gonna matter over there. So, and an unhappy leader, I don't think so, <laughs> can perform very well. Uh, which uh, brings me to the last point of uh, the evolution and which is something we're doing right now, uh, making this YouTube video, uh, which is social media. Very, very important tool when it comes to leadership. I mean, right now we are uh, sitting in uh, 2019, uh, 1 billion accounts on uh, Instagram, uh, 2 billion each on Facebook and YouTube. That's a lot of humanity. That is a lot of people who are connected, who are online. Um, and this gives you the idea of who is doing what, what your competitors are doing, but also what the trends are. What are the people liking? What are the people disliking? Is there any change that can impact your business? Is there any, uh, God forbid, any natural calamity that can uh, bring problems to your, your business? Is there any new uh, idea uh, by some by somebody that can help push your product or your service. Uh, so you have to capitalize on on all of these things. Now I'm not saying that you open an account and you check your <laughs> social media every day, but you should capitalize on the strength of social media. Your your teams. You you should have people who capitalize on the strengths of these. And this brings in knowledge. And as knowledge is power, a leader who has this power of knowledge, uh, it, it would definitely be successful but you also have to choose the right target if your target is perhaps professionals then going to linkedin is much better than going to maybe let's say instagram so a summation of these three things i would i would say that is the evolution of uh, leadership uh, as of now thank you very much thank you for your time thank you to answer it, all the questions well thank uh, you for having me joffrey it was uh, wonderful thank you so much